be amongst such an amazing group of women today. Yay. It's really a blessing. And before I get started, I just really want to honor our host. I feel it's important to give people their flowers while they're still here living. So I just really want to thank you and honor you today for allowing us to share your platform. Um, you have always been a cheerleader of me. We Today is our first day of actually meeting in person. We've followed one another for several years now. And she, you don't meet people like that today who will share your stuff, who will support you, who will congratulate you and they don't know you. So that's really an honor and a privilege to be connected to someone like that. So I thank you for allowing me to be a part of your tribe and to share your platform. So happy anniversary. Um, so for those of you who may not know me, I'll give you just a little bit about my background since she went over everything. Um, just kind of tell you how I got started because I really feel like there's some women in the room who won't move because they're stuck in fear. I was one of those women. Um, I knew what God had called me to, but I didn't like my voice. Like, I knew God had called me to preach, and I was like, mm, I don't like my voice. Everybody thinks I'm country and twangy. <laughs> And so I wouldn't use it. And, um, you know, one day I was praying. I was like, Lord, I want you to use my voice in such a way that I can not only build up your kingdom but your people. And the Holy Spirit said so clear, I already have, but you refuse to use it. So that hit me like a Mack truck in my chest. And so from that day on, I said, okay, God. Because I would do anything that you wanted me to do, as long as it was behind the scenes. I just didn't want to be seen. I, you know, I would do your finances. Um, you know, I would do all this, even though that's not my thing. Like, you give me um, what it is you want me to do, and I was the executioner, basically. I would make it happen, but I did not want to be in front of anybody, and I did not want to use my voice. So, when the Holy Spirit said that, I was just like, okay, and this is the key. When you say yes to God... Mm -hmm. It's a game changer. Everything yes. changes. Yes. So, um, you know, I'm not going to get up here and preach to you or anything like that, but I will tell you that, um, you know, putting him first in everything I do, especially my business, has done a 360. He's done things that I have not been able to do on my own. He's opened doors that I would never be able to open. And he's put people in my path. Um, basically, favor follows me everywhere I go. And that's, 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 that's me being real yes. and honest, like, you know, my husband makes the joke all the time. He'll be circling the parking lot and can't find anything. He'll go around three times, and then all of a sudden, a front parking spot will open, and I'll be like, that's that favor, baby. That's that yeah. favor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we, we get, have a joke around the house, but really, once you put him first and implement every in your business and everything, um, we're gonna, I'm going to give you a couple things today. Like My motto is, I can give you the tools, but they don't work unless you do. All right. so, um, so I'm a wife to an amazing husband. He's a, oh my Lord, he's a serial entrepreneur. So I don't know if any of you can relate to that, but he, I think he's addicted to work. But I mean, that's okay. <laughs> um, so he is in the entertainment industry. We have a blended family of four. The ages run from, oh, help me bother, 29, 22, 21. And my baby boy will be 16 on Wednesday. So y'all pray for me because he's going to be behind the wheel. <laughs> I mean, if any of you have children, you kind of know what that's already like. You kind of cringe. You, you feel my cringe whenever I say he's going to be behind the wheel. So. Um, so I'm also a life coach. I'm a minister. Oh, my goodness. Like she said, I'm an author. I'm a podcast host. And, you know, it gets really hard because I juggle my husband's business and his affairs as well. Um, I travel with him on the road. He is very busy. He's usually out of town every weekend, and so I travel with him because we believe teamwork makes the dream work. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I am his rib, so where he goes, I go. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I was telling one of the ladies earlier, a lot of people judge me because I'm a minister, but I go to the clubs where he performs and things mm -hmm. like that. But don't be afraid of what people say about you oh, or how you conduct yes. business. Yes. Right. Jesus right. walked amongst the killers, drug dealers, and right. things. So why should we be any different? Yes. Right. I can't tell you how many clubs I've been in, and I'll be in the corner, and somebody will come up to me, and they'll, be, they'll say, I don't know what it is about you. There's just something about you. Beer in their hand, cuss yeah. words coming out of their mouth, and, you know, they just ride along. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. They open up their whole life to me. And so, 
I was going through school for ministry, and I was like, okay, God, um, that, that's another thing. Like, God will just give you pieces of the puzzle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when you trust him, those puzzle pieces will start coming together. Yeah. And before, those pictures will start forming. So just trust in him. Yeah. And so I was going to school for ministry, and I was like, okay, Lord, I know that you're calling me to this. And, you know, I know you want me to use my voice and all this and that. So I want to do it. I don't, you know, sometimes. How, how many of y'all have made a deal with God? Okay, I'm gonna do it, but <laughs> I'm gonna do it, but it, see, there's just this one little thing. So, anyway, so when I said yes, um, you know, I was noticing when I was going to these clubs, like people would really open up to me, mm -hmm. but the moment they say, What do you do? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'm going to school for ministry, shut down. Yeah. They, Grabbed their stuff, got up, walked off. And I was like, well, this ain't working. Like, I mean, I know you ain't got me paying all this money and going to school for nothing. So, like, how are you going to use this? And um, one day I was driving to work because I'm, I'm still in corporate America until God says it's time to let it go. And so you just got to be obedient and trust the process. Mm -hmm. um, so for many of you, you know, you've been there for a while and you're like, when, God, when? I know that this is not where I'm going to stay, but trust the process. Because even in corporate America, he's going to use you in that arena as well and to bring people alongside you. So I was like, okay, so how, how are you going to use me to help these people in these places if as soon as I tell them I'm in ministry, they shut down? Another clear as day. I don't know how many of you hear from the Holy Spirit, but okay, so he was just like, Life coaching. I was like, life coaching? What is that? Like, I had to get to work and Google it because this is like, <laughs> because this is what before it like really got big and I didn't know what it was. So I started looking into it and I found Tony Gaskin Jr. <coughs> and he had an academy. So I, I said, okay, well, I think maybe I can double up. So I did that on top of going to school and got my certification. And so that's how I really reached these people. Mm -hmm. So now when they say, what do you, you do, I say, I'm a life coach. They're like, ooh, what is that? Mm -hmm. Tell me more about that. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I do it. And I apply those biblical principles. You, you ease that Jesus in on them. And that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't really know that they really got it, but you know, they say birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. And so once they're around you long enough, that old stuff starts to fall off and mm -hmm. that new starts to sprout. So just be bold. Like somebody said, Kim is bold in what she does. Don't be afraid to be bold. So whatever your business strategy is, like I said, prayer is a part of my business strategy. When If any of you follow me, you're going to get a little laughter because I want you to know I'm real. I have real life issues. I struggle with things just like you do. I am far from perfect. Lord knows God's still working on me, right? <laughs> But I, you're also going to get some Jesus with that. So for those of you, I'm just going to tell you right now, if you don't want to hear it, don't follow me. Don't follow me. I'm not going to beat it over your head or anything like that, but I will. You're going to get it. Um, but I think that's important because had it not been for him and me trusting the process, I would not be where I am today. And we all know we're not where we want to be, but thank God we're not where we used yeah. to be. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I was one of those people that I never really wanted to be a business owner, to be honest. I was shy. Like I said, I was quiet. I was okay working nine to five, punching that clock, you know, and working for somebody else. And that just would irritate my husband. Because like I said, he's a serial entrepreneur. He's like, everybody in this house is going to work and they're going to have their own business. I was like, I don't want my own business. I want you. That's a headache. Like, I don't even like people. <laughs> But that's the change that God has done over the years just because I said yes to the little things. And it has just really grown. Um, I was able to write a book called The Best Version of Me. And in that book, I talk about rejection. I talk about being raped, being molested, church hurt, a lot of these things. And so as I trusted the process with that, when I started writing the book, God said, okay, you're going to have a small group from this. You're going to have a leader guide. You're going to do a workbook. And you're going to have a conference every year. All this stuff started coming. I said, Jesus, I ain't got the book wrote yet. Like, I agreed to write the book. And I don't even know how I'm going to write the book. And you're, you're flooding me with all this stuff. But that's, those are the puzzle pieces. That's how he works. But I trusted the process. 
I probably wrote the book in about two, three months. And when I say, I take that back, the Holy Spirit wrote that book. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, that's why when I teach, I teach from experience. I don't teach by what I want you to know or what Google or anything like that. If I don't know, I'm going to pass it off to somebody else and say, hey, I don't, I've never experienced that, but I know somebody who does. That's why every coach needs a coach. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's plenty out here for all of us. So I'm not one of these people who want to just, I'm not going to take your money. If I can't help you, I'm just going to say, look, I don't think I'm the right person for you. It, I'm not going to let you keep funding me to sit here on a call or visit you once a week or whatever because that's just, this is my ministry overall. Mm -hmm. And God's going to hold me accountable for that. So that's I take right. that seriously. So long story short, I got the book wrote, I got the workbook, I got the leader guide, I got the small group going. Yes. So that, trust the process. Yes. You can say that a lot. So um, with that, I, I'm just really honored because even with that, he's given me more extension to create the business that I never wanted. <laughs> That's how Covered Girls Coaching and Services came into play. Um, actually, is me being obedient to that last process of the small group and all that. So he's given me a vision to have a continuation program for the people who really didn't get what the healing they needed through those six weeks. And, you know, let's be honest, sometimes... We're a little hard-headed. We don't get it the first time. It may mm -hmm. take us two or three times to go around. So that's an extended service where I walk hand-in-hand hand with them to kind of get to the root of those issues. But I have a flip side to that. So those who got what they needed but are wanting to start a business, then I help them start that. We work with branding, marketing, doing their LLC. Because let me just tell y'all ladies, if it's not a legitimate business and it's an uh -huh. LLC, you just got a side hustle with a name. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, yes, okay? Yes, um, cash App and all that, PayPal, mm -hmm. Venmo, all that's going to catch up with you this year. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to get it and make it legit. Yeah. So that's basically what I do. I help them who's ready, you know, and try to pour into them. And a lot of us, let's be real, women, we won't do it because we're too busy trying to pour into everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so we have nothing Ooh, left. Cool. <laughs> and so, you know, we have kids. If you're, we wear so many hats. Yes. You know, and at the end of the day, I, I feel like I have nothing left to give. Like some days, my husband's like, baby, I'm like, don't baby me nothing. Like, <laughs> yeah, she checked out like two hours ago. I, I ain't here. I don't have it. You know, and so I want to commend y'all for investing in yourselves and being yes. here today. Because that's the one thing that you're going to learn in business. If you don't invest in yourself, then you're not going to have a business. Mm -hmm. Because the way the industry is constantly changing, mm -hmm. you're going to have to invest in yourself. And it takes money to make money. And some of us are cheap. We Come on now. We, yeah. we are so cheap. We'll go stand in line for some Jordans for our, uh, for our baby. But we won't spend $50 on a course for ourselves. That's, that's going to help build our business. And so I commend you guys for joining today and really investing in yourself because this is going to help you. These ladies are going to pour into you and give you some major things that's going to help you. And so, like I said, um, not only prayer, but I stand on Habakkuk 2 too. Baby, write the vision and make it plain. If you cannot write down what your goals are, how are you going to have a business that's successful? I like to do this every year at the beginning of the year. So January 1st, I go buy me a new planner mm -hmm. and I write it down. I don't care how crazy it sounds. There's nothing too small for God. That's right. So I write it down. I sit there, I flip through it. First quarter. So by March, I'm looking back. I'm marking things off. You'll be surprised if you just write it down and you ain't even got to go back and look at it till March. How much stuff you have already accomplished because you wrote it down. Mm -hmm. that's good. And that's, that's a major key. We have to stay organized and we have to know where we're going. That's if we don't know where we're going, then you're going nowhere. That's mm -hmm. it. So before I get started, I, I want to share some really simple tips today. And I know you're going to be like, God, these are so lame and simple. But I'm trying to teach you the foundation. I'm, I'm giving you the foundation of how to have a successful business. Because many of us think that we...
create the website, we buy a domain, we get a brick and mortar building, we open the doors, and immediately we're going to start making money. But that's not it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you'll get in there and you'll soon learn, well, I'm way over my head, you know. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing. And a lot of those things I had to learn along the way by trial and error. But you don't fail unless you don't try. And so remember, if you if it doesn't turn out like what you thought, you can always pick it up, flip it, reverse it, do whatever, you know, That's just try right. it again. <laughs> and so, um, there, and there's no such thing as small business. How many of you in here say, I have a small business, or you buy those stickers that say, thank you for shopping with my small business? Do y'all do that? Anybody? Woo, thank you, Jesus, because we was going to rebuke that in the name of Jesus yes, today. Right. <laughs> we don't do small, okay? Right. I want y'all to get out of the mindset of small. I don't have a small business. I want you to start thinking billboards, chains, franchises. Yeah. That's where we're trying to go. Yeah. So before I get started, I want us to stand on our feet, and we're going to do a couple affirmations over our business. Yes. Right. For power. Mm -hmm. What we speak manifests and power the life and death that are in the power of our time. Amen. So number one, my business is going to be a multi-billionaire business. Yes. My, my business, business is going to be a multi-billionaire business. In Jesus' name, I can't Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> I will have billboards, chains, and franchises. I will have billboards, chains, and franchises. I will leave a legacy for my great, great, great grandchildren. I will leave a legacy for my great, great, great grandchildren. Amen. All Here right. we go. Accomplish things that you can do 
And then don't be afraid to celebrate. It doesn't matter how big or how small. And I think that's how we fall off. We don't celebrate ourselves. That's right. true. You know, and we don't do that much. We'll go celebrate our babies for making the the baseball team that they're never going to even step on the field. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we know before we sign them up, like, this is probably going to be his thing. But go, baby. You can do this. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we don't do the same thing for ourselves. Yeah. So, you know, if, hey, I sold a book today, guess what? I'm getting that coffee. <laughs> you know, I mean, you just have to celebrate yourself. Absolutely. Um, also, analyze your competition. This is a big thing, y'all. And a lot of people won't do it because they're just like, mm, you know, I don't want them to think I'm copying them. It's okay to copy somebody as long as you copy the right cat. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for instance, like we, we talked about the beauty industry. Look how much that has grown over the years. Yes. It started out with just hair and nails. Mm -hmm. Now we're doing permanent makeup, we're doing eyelashes, yes. we're doing eyebrows, we're doing wigs mm -hmm. and units, installs, all this stuff. I don't even know what all's out there, to be honest, but it just keeps growing. And that's another reason why you have to invest in yourself. Because as the market grows, you'll find yourself, everybody passing you up. Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to kind of analyze your competition. If you're a boutique owner, we'll just use this as an example. Um, a lot of people maybe not, will not start out with a brick and mortar building. So it may be an online business at first. So it's okay to check out that competition. Go on their website, see how they do, how they market. See what type of models they have. I personally, I don't like those 90 pound models. That, that is not gonna look like that on me. I order it and I look like a busted can of biscuits. You know, I wouldn't want to look like that model. You know, I do that every summer with the bathing suit. Am I the only one that does that? And I'm like, okay, well, it's the same thing. So look what they offer. See, do they have a VIP list? What comes with being a VIP member? Like, what, what are the perks? What kind of payments do they accept? Um, you know, just everyday shopping with some people. Like, even if you buy purses or accessories from somebody, see what kind of payment options and things like that have they have. Um, I know I've had a recent experience where they wanted to charge me for the type of payment source they use because it charged them a fee. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think that's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's yours as a business owner, right? Mm -hmm. So I decided not to do business with her over that fee. And that also, and I was gonna spend a couple hundred dollars with her mm -hmm. because I, don't, I feel like you as the business owner, you made that decision to use Cash App, PayPal, and it's not even legit, come on. Mm -hmm. You can't even take right. credit card payments like Square, right. but you right. want me to charge, pay me for what it's gonna cost you to cash mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. what they deduct yeah. from you. Yeah. Come on now. So pay attention to those things because your competition, they may give you cues of what to do, but they may also give you clues as what not, not to, to do. do. So it's okay to, you know, analyze your competition. Um, also, understand your risk and rewards. This is big because, like I said, when we get into this, we don't really know what the downside is. But if you ask yourself, okay, what is the downside, and you can answer that question, you're good to go. Because in that, in your mind, that's the worst case scenario, right? Okay, so if this happens, what would I do? And if you can answer that, you're good. Um, th this knowledge will really allow you to really take all kind of calculated risk, and you're going to have to do that in business. Mm -hmm. And I, I know people, they cringe on that when they're like, risk, I want to play it safe. But you'll never expand what you have until you take a risk. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of that walk by faith kind of thing. You know, I, I didn't realize that in the beginning, you know, um, walk by faith and not by sight. I just really used that by my gas tank. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm one of these who never likes to fill up, and so um, I had to realize that the hard way. Like, in order to expand and get out there, you're going to have to take risks, mm -hmm. and you're not going to be always able to predict everything. But that it wouldn't be called a risk, right? right. So, be creative. I cannot tell y'all. Do not do like I did in the beginning where you're stuck behind the scenes and you're afraid to step out because you don't like this, you don't like that. You are your brand. You That's are your right. walking billboard. Right. A lot of times you're not going to have PR. You're not going to have anybody there supporting you. You are it. Mm -hmm. So we're all going to be on those days where you're not feeling it. 
Mm -hmm. I know it's not just me. Like some days I wake up and I'm like, I don't feel like dealing with this person today. Have y'all ever got that call on your yeah. phone ring and you're just like, yes, Lord. God, I don't have anything. They're about to suck the life out of me with their issues. And I keep telling them the same thing. Every day. And you keep bringing this person around so I know they're my assignment. So, you know, be creative. <laughs> you're going to have to stay creative. So be open to new ideas and don't get stuck in a box. Like I said, don't be afraid to let people know if Jesus is a part of your brand, mm -hmm. That's right. you, you either mm -hmm. like it or you don't. Yes, right. yeah. There's plenty of businesses out there who don't implement him into their business. Mm -hmm. I, God bless you. Right. I pray you do well, but that ain't what you're getting over here. Right. Okay? Right. That's good. You're getting prosperity. You're getting a little bit of Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to laugh. We're going to have fun. That, see, people put us in a box and think we, we can't like fashion. We have to dress a certain way. Like, I'm busting out all that. Like yes. I am grown, and you know I like to dress up. I like clothing. I like fashion. I like to look good for my man. Am I the only one? Okay. 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 So if I'm going somewhere and he wants me to wear, if he wants me to look like a busted can of biscuits, so that's him. If he, thinks, if he thinks I look good, well, baby, go on. I mean, that's you. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a compromise. I'll wear the little tight dress, but you know everything can't be hanging out. Yes. As long as you know I'm not. Busted and disgusted, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> right, no so, so it's a compromise. But when I say be creative, that's just like with my business, the life coaching. I thought it was going to be solely ministry. But God took what I thought, and he's mm -hmm. totally changed it into a business. And again, like I said, I was okay working a nine-to-five. I didn't like people, which I didn't understand how I was going to do ministry and didn't like people. But... He's changed all that. Um, even, me, I'm, I'm no longer afraid to speak. As you can see, I just write along. But that's the thing that God will do in you. And so don't be afraid about what people think about you. I, I've always been the black sheep. Everywhere I go, I'm the minority. I'm <laughs> <laughs> saying. But I thank God for my differences. I, I thank God for, you know, um, always making me stand out in places that, because I don't want to blend in. If I got to be like them, forget it. I, you know, so we're women, you know, we're all built different. We look different. Our hair is different. But we're really the same. People try to make it out to be more than what it really is. If we sit down and have a conversation, we have more in common than you think. So don't be afraid to have morals, have boundaries, in your business and don't be afraid to let that people know what those are so right. sometimes we do have to be a little more creative with them so like i said sometimes i have to slide that bible in mm -hmm. but hey you do it however you got to do it mm -hmm. stay focused oh my goodness Whew, rome wasn't built in a day how many of y'all have heard that mm -hmm. okay so this was probably the hardest thing for me because in case you can't tell i'm kind of all over the place I have uh, kids still in the house, one with a college degree. Oh, well, it didn't turn out. I didn't know what I want to do. I want to go back. And it's almost for the exact same thing. I'm like, huh, okay, <laughs> we're going to do this one last time, then you're out, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, then you got the other one. I, I want a car. I want this. And I have my husband. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. And then you got the dog. I have all this stuff. It's hard to stay focused and have a business, mm -hmm. especially when your business is kind of a ministry because you have people pulling in every direction. You have these friends, you have these associates, you have colleagues, you have uh, people who just want to be nosy and want to know, okay, what is it that she's doing? Um, you, Y'all will think I'm up here telling a lie, but I promise you. I will have people to sign up for life coaching just to be nosy. And I thank God for a discernment that within that first conversation, I can tell, are they really serious? Because you know what? I ask, give me three goals that you want to accomplish. What? Uh, what? Uh. Okay, well, I don't think we're a good fit. You know, I'm not going to take your money. I'm not going to waste your time. I don't think you're ready. There's seasons for everything, and I just don't think this is your season. And so it's hard to stay focused because I think Kim was talking about earlier to one of the other ladies how people will come in and it's so true they come in just to shake things up or they come to distract you the enemy is 
Really? He uses the same old tactics. He just uses a different way. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to be really discerning and ask God for discernment, especially for those people, because they will come out of nowhere. You will have people that had talked to you since high school, and then all of a sudden, girl, what are you doing? Hey, I saw you doing this. You can't take everybody with you. That's right. That's right. So you have to be wise to that, and you have to open your eyes. And when you're distracted and you're not focused, you'll miss it all. And you'll take people along with you who was not supposed to go with you, and they will destroy everything you feel. Yeah. Everything. Credibility, your character, is hard to build. It only takes one incident to tear that all down, and it may have taken you years to build it. So be very mindful of who you have around you and stay focused. Um, prepare to make sacrifices. Oh, Lord, I didn't know the sacrifices when I got ready to do this. Um, I experienced a little bit with my husband and his business. Uh, like, I, again, he's an entertainer, so which means I get makeup days. You know, in school, you know how we have makeup days, snow days, and stuff like that. So I get makeup days for all holidays, anniversaries, birthdays, whatever it is. Because if it's a major event, he's going he's gonna to do a show. So I sacrifice whatever it is we got going on for everybody else to have a good time. Yeah. And so you're going to have to sacrifice the same thing. So I didn't realize I was taking on a double sacrifice whenever I opened up my business as well. Because those family vacations that we used to go on, we, we don't go on them anymore. We don't have time. You know, um, our kids are getting older, so they don't need us as much because they're kind of trying to do their own thing. But now our lives is just oversaturated with other things, and we're just doing so much. So Christmas, we have Chris, Christmas morning, but usually there's going to be a New Year's Eve party or, you know, uh, ministry never stops. It's like a funeral home, I promise. It's open 24-7. Yeah. And, you know, it's exhausting. So you have to make sure that you're ready for those top sacrifices, especially if you have small children. I'm not saying it can't be done. Just know that um, it's going to take a lot out of you. And if, if your children are smaller, it may take longer because there's going to be events that you're not going to want to miss. So make sure that, you know, you have that balance. Uh, I struggled with balance for a long time. I was either way in in ministry and not so much over here. Um, you know, I was buying groceries for the church, but I didn't have any at home. And my husband's like, hey, if you can't get it together, you're going to have to quit. And I go, oh, no, I'm not, you know. So I prayed. I, I would say, Lord, show me ways that I can balance this stuff. And he would. I would get ready for work early in the morning, and I would have like 45 minutes extra because, I don't know, I was extra fast that morning. I don't, it, it was God. That's all I can say. And... Um, so I would make a casserole or something and put it in the fridge. So that way when I got home, all I had to do is swing it in the oven and they were good to go. So, hey, be specific in your prayers. I will say that <laughs> as well. Um, provide a great service. I got one more after this, then we're done. So, you know, there's many businesses that really forget that providing great services is mm -hmm. one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. um, it's customer service. Mm -hmm. It can make or break your business. Absolutely. Like I said before, if you're having a bad day and you go off on somebody or uh, somebody's just in your establishment and you and a customer are arguing or something like that, it could very well break your, break your business because word of mouth is more important than a business card. Mm -hmm. Let's just be honest. They, we have social media now. People lie. They, sh they could go on there and say things that never even happened or said and, you know, these screenshots, videos, all these things, you could really tear down everything that you built up, and that would, that would be a shame. And um, be considerate of people's time. Be on time. Um, if you're not early, you're late. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's good. Um, it's not professional to have a business, and you can't return calls when you say you're going to. Stand right there. <laughs> yeah. If you have an appointment and you're late and your client is, is waiting, that's a bad look. Yes. Personally, I would not do business with you again. That would be my last appointment with you. Um, because my time is important as well. Don't, my motto is don't waste my time and I won't waste yours. Mm -hmm. Because time is something we can't get 
back. Yeah, I can get that money. money back for your consultation or whatever it was yeah. that I was going to spend. But I can't get my time back. That's right. So always be on time. If you're hosting an event, oh my goodness, and these people have paid tickets, please be on time. Show them free. Yes. Show them free. <laughs> I can't tell y'all how many events we go to with my husband. Wow. It says on the flyer, show starts at 9. I say, we already know it's not going to start till 11. Right. Wow. You know, and we had this conversation in the parking lot. Um, you know, he liked to be one of these who would make a grand entrance, you know, and he would be 30, 45 minutes late. I'm like, you're the headliner. You can't do that. That is poor business etiquette. Yeah. I wouldn't hire you. Matter of fact, you wouldn't get paid tonight if you were late and you were on my tickets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, he's about 45 minutes to an hour early, and he complains every time. He's like, I don't like being on white folks time. <laughs> <laughs> Got your money first, right? So if they don't get paid, you got exactly. paid. Thank you later. Yeah. 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 So you have to learn to talk to him in money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he can understand. So now he's on board. So we're on white folks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last but not least, be consistent. This is the most important piece because, like I said, over time, you're going to get burnt out. You're going to want to quit. But it's just like anything else. How many of y'all do social media? Yes. Everybody, okay. Yes. I love TikTok. I can stay on there for hours. I don't, my kids make fun of me like, oh my, why are you on TikTok? I'll, the old people are taking over TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Yeah, y'all got that old people. <laughs> He's like, I don't want you on TikTok. All my friends are following you. I said, well, good, because they need some Jesus. <laughs> Not a bunch of heathens. So, but it's like consistency with TikTok. People were making fun of me when I first started doing TikTok. Mm -hmm. And it has grown to where they're paying me. Mm -hmm. And so I was consistent in it. I started out with just a couple of followers, maybe 50. But I committed every week. I called it TikTok Tuesday and TikTok Thursday. I'm working from home. Maybe I'm saving on makeup, clothes, everything. I said, Lord Jesus, just let me stay at home because that's money I'm putting into my business. So... I wouldn't wear any makeup or anything, so my husband would come home on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and he was like, what is the deal? You look really good today. Every, like, there's certain days of the week I come home, and you got on makeup, you got on clothes, like, well, what's going on? I said, it's TikTok Tuesday and Thursday. He's like, what is that? And so, I said, on Tuesday and Thursdays, I get up early, I get ready, I start my work, and then when I get what I've got done and it slows down, I do TikToks. He's like, what? You know, and that was kind of like even a joke in the house. They would be walking by and they're like, oh, she's on TikTok. <laughs> you know, but over time, I was consistent, and I did that every week. And when I would do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would do at least three videos, if not more. Sometimes I would stack them. Yeah. And I even have done this with my podcast because I know that I get so busy that I can't do it, and I would schedule and roll them out. What started out with, like, you know, four followers, has turned into, I have like over 190K, wow. you know what I'm saying, uh, views and, you know, you, it, it builds. And so be consistent yeah. and don't care about what people say about That's you. Right. Yeah. You know, what they think, you know, like I said, I had no plans to do TikTok. You know, I was just watching them and laughing and all that. When I first got on it, I didn't even know what I was going to do. And it, it's going to blow y'all's minds, but you'll be so surprised how many people will flock to you. All I do is lip sync sermons. Mm -hmm. That's all I do. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I do a little stuff off the grid, you know, a little funny stuff and stuff like that. But mostly that's all I do. And it has just grown by that because the stuff that I do, I take the clips that are relatable. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. I take the things that people are having everyday That's issues good. with. Like, you know, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Somebody's struggling with that. I, I was struggling with that. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like, I love Jesus, but tick me off or let me hit that baby toe on the couch. I'll make up some words. You know, <laughs> so, you know, we have to let people know that we're human too. Because when we start acting like we have it all together and we're perfect, that's where they start falling yeah, off. So if you let them, you use the things that are relatable and you're consistent in it, I promise you, 
eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and I'm a witness to that. So thank you guys so much for allowing me to be here, and remember to adjust your turn to be the best.